Hey everybody, today I'm working again on a CRT and this time I have a little bit of an unusual combination for you. This is a Sony Macintosh CRT monitor. Now this monitor came to me from another Patreon member who wanted to have it serviced and recapped and then recalibrated. Uh, this one is from 1992 and as I said, you look at it from the front while it's running and you cannot tell that it is a Sony Trinitron monitor unless you are familiar with the way the tubes on the Trinitrons look. But once you disassemble it, you'll easily see Sony parts and Sony did have a agreement with Macintosh and Apple back in the 1990s to produce these monitors and some other parts within the actual computer like power supplies and other things. But as I said, today we're going to concentrate solely on the monitor. Um, I'm not going to actually show you how I tore this down because it does a great job inside the service manual, which I'll have a link to in the description of this video. And it tells you how to tear this down. You should really look through that before you jump into this anyway. Um, that can accompany this video. So uh, what we're going to see now is more or less the monitor taken apart. Um, you do have to flip it on its face and pretty much uh, disassemble the tube and front bezel from the bottom uh, piece that has your buttons and your board and then uh, the uh, swivel bottom that's all in one piece and then you've got your top shell that you need to get out of the way but here's some more information on this Sony tube you can look and see we're looking at about a 13 inch Sony Trinitron tube here very high quality we've also got a high quality yoke assembly here from Sony and this would resemble something that was in one of the higher end PVMs. It actually has three adjustment potentiometers where you can adjust your convergence right on there. And then you have your convergence rings and a lot of copper and a very nice design, especially for the early 90s. This would have been a very high quality uh, deflection yoke. And since it was installed so well, it looks like there's not even any convergence strips or magnets used. So uh, that's another key feature where you've got really good convergence and deflection uh, coming from the yoke. Now, if we look at the other pieces here with the monitor, I'll show you the base plate again, what I talked about before, how you had to remove this. This is what it looks like removed. There is a degaussing coil on the bottom. And then you've got your video cable, which I have disassembled from the board. Uh, but once you get that pretty much out of the way and you can get your deflection board, uh, taken care of and serviced. That's really what the important thing we're working here today. And this is a little deflection board with a lot of capacitors in here, almost 30 and from 1992. So we should try to replace these and then hopefully do an adjustment on our calibrations for geometry and get a good result. But some things we do need to take into consideration are the height and size of a lot of these capacitors. We cannot get very large uh, replacements that will not fit in here. If we do that, then we could have some trouble when we try to reassemble. So you will need to take into consideration when making your cap kit for this, the size of the capacitors. So that's just it. I do have the cap kit in now. We're gonna recap this board. Here is the neck board, which stays kind of attached to it. There are no capacitors on it. Everything is on this main little board here, this D board. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to recap it. And you can tell from the footage I showed earlier, I'll show some more of that. This monitor worked very well for hours. So it's not a problem of really needing much repair. This is more preventative maintenance and will help this monitor last a whole lot longer. We'll also clean it. But now uh, let's go ahead and get all these old capacitors off this board. I'm back with the chassis and all the capacitors have been removed. There were a total of 29. Here they all are. Now these were mostly Nishikon and Rubicon caps with some other brands mixed in there, but three of the caps were definitely bad and failed. And those were inside this area and this area that were covered with the heat shielding. They were 50 volt, 4.7 microfarad capacitors, two of them in there that had burned up and dried out. And then there was a 10 UF 100 volt capacitor in here that burned out. 
And what I could do when I when I hit put heat on the pad here to remove the capacitor, it would instantly smoke on the other side of the board and it would smell like dead fish. So that's a sign that the capacitor was pretty much done. I did clean the area with isopropyl alcohol so you won't see any residue left over. There really wasn't any visible. Check out those like diodes, I guess they are, the DP. I think those would be diodes. These are just some odd parts that are hopefully never going to go out because I have no idea what you'd replace something like that with. I'd have to do a lot of research. Uh, but that was just something interesting. you got to be careful. This board wasn't particularly difficult to work around, but it did say take some time. And I've got my first set of five capacitors here that will be going in up here where the neck board is and then we'll work inside this box and then fill the whole board and come look at it again at the end and just one more thing this is a definite sony proprietary flyback on here so that's pretty cool just like that we have now completed our cap kit every single capacitor that was an electrolytic radial capacitor was replaced and everything seems to have worked out perfectly what I'd like to mention on this capacitor kit is obviously we've got a mix of brands and I will only use top quality brands however there are a bunch of good capacitor brands that you can choose from every capacitor is rated at 105 degrees Celsius and you could even read that on the side of some of these for example right there it says 105 degrees Celsius it will say that on every capacitor and that's an upgrade from the original capacitors that were only 85 degrees rated so these would have a much longer lifespan and they are all better quality replacements now that doesn't mean we're going to particularly get better performance because they're doing the same job that they should be doing but we might get some better performance as far as consistency and hopefully things like warming up the monitor that will be improved by this cap kit again some of the capacitors inside the hotter area were burnt out three of them within those two blocks and then the biggest issue that I ran into also is scarcity of parts. So you'll notice this capacitor right here that's coin shaped. It almost looks like a coin battery. It is a 16 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor. And you can tell it is just a slightly bit larger, rounder than it should be. And the problem there is that's the, the closest I could get on a size that was in stock that I wouldn't have to wait for almost a year for a new production to come in. So to solve this issue, the capacitor is safely installed, but you'll notice the yellow inside there. Those are heat shrink tubing that's been installed on those legs just to prevent anything from ever slipping in there and possibly shorting to one of those legs. That's not a possibility anymore. If you look at the bottom side, we've got the boards completely cleaned and you can see this solder work. I'll show you just how clean a lot of those solder joints came out to. And we will test these solder joints with a multimeter for continuity just to make sure everything is connected. And that will give us pretty much a 99% chance of having a good uh, test result once we reassemble everything so that's what we're going to do next is we'll test these Okay, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to test out our work. I've got the computer 
with power going into it. Now I'm going to feed the power into the monitor and then we'll power everything else on. And hopefully we will have just an uneventful, normal powering on sequence. What I can remember, you push a button back here to turn the PC on and that noise means it's turned on. And oh goodness, here we go. Okay, so far so good. Let's just see what happens as it's supposed to come on here. I feel it. Give it a minute or two. Looks like it's extremely dim. Let me turn the lights out. Maybe I can see something on the screen. Is that right? So let's see. There we go. Yes. Great, great, great. So we're not having any of the crap that was happening during startup where it was shaking. Oh yeah. I think we've, we've got it going. Let's let it warm up here and I'm just going to leave it running and then we'll come back and, and check out some adjustments we can make. But yeah, so far so good. All right, everybody. First off, sorry about the refresh rate on the monitor. It just runs at an off frequency from any camera lens that I have and setting available on my camera. So I just can't get it to sync right. So do not look at it, but note that it is working better. I will <laughs> show you from the front how the screen size has been expanded. I'll try to get rid of some of that blinking, but it's still there. But you can notice how I've expanded it out to the maximum allowability and it's just running smooth and perfectly and honestly the monitors running just wonderful way better than it did before so that's definitely because of those caps and so what I've got to do now is just place the shell back on here in the back well there we have it a completed project and our Apple Macintosh Trinitron monitor is restored and this is just a wonderful example of how something could come out looking even better than it did before and now we know this product is going to have a very long life and the only thing that will cause it to burn out would be a problem with the tube or with the flyback for the most part everything else inside should be good and serviced to last at least 20 more years with pretty heavy use. And that's going to do it for this one. Thanks again for watching today. Please let me know if you have any opinions or comments about this restoration. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.